months go quickly, don't they? And I know that we're probably not giving you as much of an ASEAN as you would like. Thank you all for your emails. We will do more in the future. But, of course, it's the first Tuesday of the month, and as we promised, we have uh, Mr. S. Roy here with us from uh, ASEAN Affairs on our ASEAN Roundup. Welcome back. Thank you. Okay, so, ASEAN. Are we happy with ASEAN and the way it responded to the Myanmar situation? From my point, far too slow. Well, um, many people would agree uh, with you. However, the ASEAN Secretariat would like to say that uh, they are trying their best. Uh, Surin, uh, in fact, has been pushing for an aid meeting in Myanmar, especially after the visit by the United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. Uh, what they call the junta is unhindered access, is what the outside world is seeking. But yes, a case can be made that ASEAN perhaps could have moved faster, Mm -hmm. Because uh, even after a week after Cyclone Nagis uh, devastated the, the southern part of Myanmar, ASEAN was still getting it act together. Mm -hmm. But uh, with all fairness, we can say that ASEAN is on the job right now and uh, getting aid across uh, to the victims of this terrible tragedy uh, of Cyclone mm -hmm. Nagis in Myanmar. But I, I guess they can learn a lesson here mm -hmm. for the future uh, that uh, similar crisis, the last such crisis ASEAN faced was the tsunami. Mm. And after this, this is the second biggest crisis mm. to have hit ASEAN. I hope we would have learned more from that. But, you know, I guess that this time, you know, it's like we're in the box seat, we're actually cheering, and I guess that we've got to be able to move quickly. Uh, even if not all of the members are involved, you've still got to get individual countries together very quickly because we're talking about human lives. Absolutely right. Uh, absolutely right. This is something of an acid test or litmus test for ASEAN. Mm. That uh, one is the issue of democracy in Myanmar, which is an ongoing issue. But mm. that can be deliberated over a period of time. Mm. But a uh, natural catastrophe calls for a much faster mm. action, speed mm. of response, and you can't just keep on sitting and discussing. Unlike uh, what the French, you know, government was saying that mm. they should airdrop aid into Myanmar mm. if, if they are having problem with the military. Well, we, the difference between China and how quickly China moved Absolutely. and, and Myanmar is just amazing. I mean, it's... It is I a mean, terrible China tragedy is, mm. and um, all we can say is that the lives lost may not have been necessary, mm. uh, especially, you know, in the times of uh, the crisis. Mm. Uh, it is the speed of response which can also save a lot of lives. Indeed. Talking about one contentious issue to another, I know that we last time talked about rice. Yes. But, you know, let's talk about why would they call it a rice cartel that immediately says to the world, monopoly. Is it a good idea to have a cartel or something with a similar name? Or what are you suggesting? Okay. Um, what are the facts? There are, there are two contenders uh, to this uh, idea of, of floating a rice cartel. They call it OREC, O-R-E-C, uh, Organization of Rice Exporting Countries. Mm. something like OPEC. Mm. Uh, Samak Sundarvesh, the Prime Minister of Thailand, says it is his idea and Hun Sen says no, it is actually his idea because he raised his idea way back in 2005. Mm. Uh, there are two sides to the argument of a cartel. Uh, on the one hand, uh, the rice producing countries, the five major rice producing countries of uh, ASEAN, which is Thailand, Vietnam, Burma, Laos and Cambodia, together produce 60 million tons of milled rice, which is around 14% of the world output. So, so 14 or 40? One four, one one four. Four, 14% of the world output, which gives them quite a, quite a muscle in terms of uh, negotiating mm. supply and prices. Now, I see you're in your Indonesian batik shirt. That's right. You enjoyed your week in Indonesia? Oh, it was a great time. I had uh, my entire week I spent last week in Indonesia. Uh, first, I started in Yogyakarta at the invitation of the city government there. And it was absolutely wonderful, the hospitality and especially the energy of the young, they call the youth uh, ambassadors, tourism ambassadors, the young Indonesian boys and girls who put their heart and soul in making this uh, trip a great success. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I enjoyed very much. Uh, now, are they really into ASEAN? You know, there's a huge population, a huge power of voice. Is, in fact, Indonesia very much keen on working closer with ASEAN? You're so right. Actually, ASEAN with a population of 560 million and Indonesia's population alone is 260 million, which makes it by far the mm. biggest country. In fact, 50% of the population of ASEAN resides in, ASEAN, uh, in Indonesia. Indonesia is the place where uh, the ASEAN Secretariat is located, Jakarta. 
And from my uh, interactions with the young people out there, and especially in a survey which we published in our latest issue of ASEAN FS magazine, you will see that actually Indonesian youth are very connected to ASEAN. They feel proud to be citizens of ASEAN and they want to work closely with their counterparts, young people in other parts of ASEAN. Mm. So yes, you can say that uh, Indonesia is a very key player and there's a lot of enthusiasm mm. for them to, to work with ASEAN. Good. You talk about youth and we talk about Indonesia and we all know it's a, basically a Muslim nation. That's right. Uh, the biggest, in fact, in terms of number. Yes. But I hear when we were talking off air that, in fact, it has also a very large Buddhist community. Uh, yes. In fact, the interesting point is it's not large in terms of absolute numbers. It's actually 1% of the population, which is 2 million Buddhists. Mm. But the interesting fact to note is that uh, uh, the recently, which is uh, the biggest uh, event in the calendar, in the Buddhist calendar, is Vishaka Puja mm. uh, Day, which is celebrated with as uh, a holiday, national holiday in Thailand mm. and other Buddhist countries. In Indonesia, it's a holiday too, a national holiday. And in the ancient Buddhist temples of Borobudur, which is near Indonesia, mm. uh, every year they call it Waisak. Waisak celebrations are held. That's W A I S A K. A K. Waisak. That mm. is the name of Vishaka Puja mm. in Indonesia. Mm. And the president of Indonesia attends this ceremony mm. at the Does Borobudur he? temple. So. Mm. All over the place, even in Jakarta, you can see people with banners wishing you a happy Vaisak Day. Mm. Don't forget, as we showed you last week, the new edition of Asian Affairs comes out every two months, bi-monthly? Uh, it's actually quarterly. Quarterly? Okay. I'm trying to get more, you see, okay. for you, because <laughs> the quality is very, very good. Thank you. Asian's Mr. Mobiles. Interesting. We're going to put up on the screen where you can actually get Asian Affairs. Thank you, Loy, for joining us, and we hope that... Uh, There'll be some additional facts that we can talk of during the month. Otherwise, we'll see you again first Tuesday of the month. That's right. We'll see you again uh, on the first Tuesday of every month. Thank you so much.